Joe, this is great. I mean, he, I can't tell you how excited I am to see this. So this is really good. Thank you for going to all the trouble sure. to put this together. Look at you. This one here. Okay, Joe, it's all yours, buddy. Thank you. Well, guys, what I, I I'm tying a fly that I used on the St. Joe River in Mishawaka, and I caught a nice Scamania steelhead on. It was with Ripple Guide Service. They kind of turned me on to it. It was a uh, a fly of their origin. It was mostly olive in color with some sparkle, tied on a shank with a trailing hook. And so I I wanted to duplicate that, and uh, I saw a number of things on the internet and on YouTube. But this is my version of it, and you'll see that there's there's no limit as to the colors and the size and shapes. This is rather small, comparatively speaking. That's why I call it sort of a trout, a trout fly or a trout intruder. I've used bigger ones when I was out there and um, I, I think they're proven and they work real well. It's intended to be a swung fly. So from a boat or waiting, uh, you could use a spay rod, if it's, especially if they're larger, that'll help you, you know, cover more ground. Uh, when I used mine, it was an, it had a little bit of weight on it, like these dumbbell eyes, but I also used a, a sink tip on it uh, to get the fly down. But the, you know, the St. Joe had a lot of current that day and I needed to get it six to eight foot deep so that it was just kind of tipping the top of the bottom. We uh, imi imitated a sculpin that day. Um, as you can see from here, I've tied a whole bunch of different versions. The one we're gonna do is, is like this or, um, Pretty much that's another way to do it with some, uh, you know, green hues. We got the, the egg in the back. We got the trailing hook. Uh, we've got some wire. I Today I tried one that was kind of yellow and flashy on a sunny day. You might try this with a, it's got a green egg in the back. So we've got a whole variety. Uh, I've tied them without weights on them. If it's a shallow day and it's clear, like if, if, when we go to Barothes, I'll bring these along uh, for the, the Pier Marquette and, if it's clear and the water's low, I'm going to do it with no weight on it and maybe a little bit of a sink tip and um, have it a bright color. If the water's murky or muddy, we'll, we'll do a dark color. Uh, I tied up like a using a rabbit strip. This is like purple, purple and pink uh, with some flash. Um, here's another one that's kind of with a, another little, a, more like a squirrel tip, but it's got some yellow in it and it's got the, the tinsel on the back. So. You can go crazy and get real creative on it. So um, I'll tie one to start and then we'll pass out and we'll, we'll kind of do another one together. I tried to be economical on, on the, uh, the components. So you'll see we're using cotter pins that I, I got from Menards. They're, they're one sixteenths. The, these are, I say in the, the recipe to get one inch, but these are three quarter. They'll work just fine. You don't need to get any bigger than that, I don't think. Uh, in addition, you can get intruder wire and you can spend a good amount of money. But if you go to Walmart or some of the hardware stores, you can get this beading wire. This is this is 300 feet, 100 yards of beading wire was for like $3. So there's a lot of options to do it. And it's you'll see when you get it, it's it's pretty strong. Uh, in addition, I, I at, over at the DuPage Fly Shop, I got some this uh, sparkle brush and this is in peacock color. I like it because it's green and it's flashy. You don't have to put necessarily any extra flash on top of it, although you could. Uh, last year at the auction, I won one of the uh, the raffle bags, so I got size six or size four hooks. It's kind of like an egg hook that we're using in the trail. Should be sufficient. And then the weight that we got on this is a, uh, it's 3 sixteenths of an inch or 5.0 millimeters, but I've tied them in smaller. Um, this would work. Once again, it depends on the, how fast the water is and this, how deep it is and, and that sort of thing. Um, in tying this fly, I look at it as kind of two parts to it. There's hardware and software, if you will. So we do the hardware first, and the hardware is going to be the weight and the cotter pin and the wire, pretty much. So you'll notice on the cotter pins, that there's always one leg that's a little bit longer. So that's the part you're going to get into your vise. So uh, this wouldn't work if you couldn't grab it, needless to say. So once you get that that in there, that's pretty solid. It's not going to go anywhere. Now, in addition, because we're we're tying a wire through this and it's got to stay on, 
I'm using some pretty heavy thread uh, and I'm just using some white thread and you can color it up at the end. That's about the only time you'll ever see it. And I'm also, uh, on most of them, I put like a dab of uh, crazy glue just to make sure it's secure. So to start things, we'll just start at the top and I'm gonna get this thread all the way on there. And the, um, the order is kind of important. So you, you get a thread base on and you make it so that it's pretty secure. Now I'm gonna put the wire and I want the wire to be on the bottom so I'm not tying over it the whole time. Uh, when you get the wire, it'll be totally straight. I kind of, I folded it in half and put a little bit of a bend in it. This will help you later on when we're threading the hook. We don't do the hook until the last thing on this fly, okay? Now to get it started, I poke it down through the top of the eye of that cotter pin. Hold on, let me get this thread out of the way. And then I estimate about how long, I've tied a number of them as you can tell, so I, I kind of have an idea of how long this is gonna be, but pretty much I'm gonna fold over about three eighths to a half of an, of an inch on the top. As you can see that this is where the hook's gonna be dangling out the back of it. When you, when you look at the real fly, it, it, if it was a little bit long, it would be okay. You know, like guys that fish beads, they put the hook about a couple inches behind a bead, so. Anyway, once you get that folded over on the top, I'm gonna wrap this pretty tight and get that secure in there. I wanna also wanna make sure it's pretty flat and I think it is. So you have wire on both sides of that cotter pin. I do, I poked, I poked the, the bended part through the, through the eye to the back and then I folded about a half an inch to three eighths of an inch back over and it's doubled over itself. So this way, I, I don't think it's gonna come off. I'm going to put a dab of crazy glue on there just to, to help secure it. Not sure it's necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay, so half the hardware is done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the, um, the barbell eyes and I'm going to tie it on the bottom. To make it a little bit easier, I'm going to flip this over. So there definitely is gonna be a top and a bottom to this fly. So I give it three wraps on one side and do another three on the other, just to make sure it's lined up. And you go over it, secure it pretty good. Most of these wraps are gonna be covered up with the fox tail and with some feathers and stuff like that. So that's pretty solid on there. Pretty much the hardware is done to get started. Now what you'll see is there's, there's one, two, three, four, there's five or six different layers. We're gonna start from the back and I've got some chenille as, sort, as the butt. Now I put that on there kind of as an attractant, give it a little bit of a bub and also so that nothing slides off the back of the fly. I don't think it's gonna because we're putting everything on pretty tight, but um, that's my intent. So we'll go, we'll, we'll take your thread all the way to the back right before you get to the vise. And we're gonna get, we got root beer chenille and we're gonna get that started. All right, so we're gonna just, I tried to cut small pieces so you're gonna, you should use all of it pretty much. And you don't need to, travel forward at all. You can just kind of keep it in the back to create that bump. And I also find it easy if you, if you want to grab these things to use that hackle pliers. And you capture it, go forward and you're good to go. And I'll cut off. You don't want us to advance that like a woolly bug and just make a, a, a tinsel bump. It's just a bump. It's, it's the butt, so to speak, right? It's, I'm gonna put a piece of tinsel in front of it that if, if it were to show, it would provide some flash and it would be a body. So basically it's just gonna be a couple of wraps of tinsel, but after that, we're gonna, we're gonna put a couple of uh, feathers in there and then we're gonna put a piece of foxtail on the top to give it a wing, as well as some of the, uh, 
the um, peacock curl. So piece of tinsel goes next. Kind of capture it. You could advance your thread a little bit. And now we're gonna just wrap a few wraps to, if it gets exposed, now you got a little flash in the body. Oh. That's all you need to go because it's going to be covered up otherwise. All right. We're going to hackle this feather. It's just a, a basic chicken feather. I picked a light gray. It's not going to be that visible. It's going to add some body and it's going to add some puff so that what goes on in front of it is going to be pushed up and is going to give it some life. So I tie it from the tip. Cut off a little bit so that you got a nice tie-in point. Take your thread back a little bit. Tie that in. And now we're going to palmer it forward a few wraps. We don't need the whole thing. These are rather long and you don't need that much because we're still putting a few more items on this fly. Also, you gotta make sure that they go back. Okay. So I think I do like three or four. I stop before I get to the fuzzy stuff. All right. I put a wrap around to secure it. And then cut it off. Now that looks kind of ugly, but we're going to push it back as we move along. I, I go back over a little bit to help secure it back. Sparkle brush. So this is going to give us some internal flash inside, and this is going to look live as it's swimming through the water. Uh, this is the peacock. It's green. Grab the tip. Get it on there pretty good. Echo pliers comes in handy again. Now, I, I like to stroke these back so that we, you know, I'm messing around with it too much, although we'll brush it out. I got a little toothbrush that will keep things flowing back. That's kind of in the way. So I'm not traveling far, I'm kind of keeping it Tight wraps together, moving forward a little bit. Because I'm going to put some fox tail on there to give it a wing on the top. All right, you get to the nub. Secure it. I do twice, once a front. Now, rather than cut that little nib off, I'm just going to fold it back and tie over it. Okay, so far pretty good. It's looking promising, I think. Okay. The fox tail we're gonna do right at the end. I got a pheasant feather on here. This is gonna give it a little bit up. Once you wrap it around, it gives it uh, maybe texture is not the wrong word. It, it looks mottled. It, it, it's not just a solid color. It's a short one, so we don't need a lot of wraps, just a couple. And it's going to lay on top of that sparkle brush. So 
So far, everything's cooperating. <laughs> now, with this one, the same thing. We're going to try and put a crease, make sure that those feathers go back. Oop. Once we get it on there, we're going to brush it out to separate all the little fibers in that feather. And those marabou are getting in the way. Okay. We'll go over the stem and capture it and clip it off. Okay, I want this to, to spread out and splay out. I don't want those things stuck together too much. Okay, this foxtail fur, I got it once again in the grab bags at the auction. I love it. It's very easy to work with. It in the water, it it looks alive. Uh, it's easy to capture. It's a lot better than trying to to do deer hair and whatnot. Now they got a piece of tape on them. Hopefully that comes off okay. And this one has a couple little chunks of skin. So we'll clean it up. And this is gonna be the wing. So this will be right on the top. Give it some life. On one of these, I even took a little marker and I darkened it up to give it sort of the back of a, of a bait fish. Now, I'm, I got some room because I wanna pull it through to give it a small of a head. It's hard to clip once it's on there. So, so I got it snug, now I'm gonna pull it down. And then I'm tight, I'm, I'm putting it on there pretty tight. The other thing is if you have a lot of random hairs on there, after we get it all tied up, you could use your lighter and you can singe them and that'll bring them down. Okay, pretty good so far. Now to give it a little bit more life, I've got these uh, peacock curls. These are gonna go on the top and they're gonna add to the wing and they're gonna flow in the water and add, also add a little reflection. Now I, want, I don't want them to be any longer than the back of the foxtail. Although you could always clip it later. That's what we'll do, I guess. I'm gonna, they're gonna go on the top, but one's gonna be like on each side of the barbell, right? On one of the flies I have on the side, I didn't like the way the head looked, so I also took some peacock and I wrapped it around and gave it sort of a green collar. That's not a bad way to go either. Okay. All right, pretty much got this done. We might trim those a little bit later, but make their, sure they're secure. Give it another wrap or two. If you want to make it, give it sort of a dark head, this would be a good time to use your marker. I'm going to color up the uh, the thread. Now, I got a green marker here to give it sort of that, a uh, little bit of the olive look. So I'm, once we discovered this and I learned this here, this is, it's been a, a really nice little hack, if you will. Okay, so my thread is green. I'm kind of tying it off. To finish it, I'm gonna go 
well, actually, I'm not going to. Sometimes I'll go across and I'll tie it in front of the barbells, but I don't want to add that extra little line in front of it. So we'll just keep it like that. So you take your whip finisher. Finish it off right behind those, those barbells. Then you're almost done. Okay, that's pretty tight. Now here's where it's gonna take a little bit of dexterity and good eyesight and good lighting. <laughs> Actually, we could trim those ostrich rolls a little bit. When, once that's in the water, those will they'll all flow back. I, I always test these. I stick them under the, my, my utility sink faucet to see what it looks like when it's wet and water's flying over it. All right. Once you got to that point, this is where we put the hook and the bead on. So... Give it a blow so you're kind of seeing the back of it, getting everything out of the way. And you take that wire and we're going to poke that through the bead first. Now, if you didn't have a tight enough pinch and that loop is too big, grab a pliers and don't pinch it too high, but give it a little crimp. All right, so then I don't know if you guys can see this or not. We're going to take that and we're going to go through the bead. That's the easy part. When we put it through the hook, the hook has got a smaller eye than the, the hole in the bead. This is a size six hook. Poke it in from the back and then we're going to loop it across the top. I want to make sure what the eyes are on the bottom. I like it with the, I like the hook pointing up like this. But the eyes in the front are on the bottom. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, and you can kind of see that, yeah. Good point. So you're gonna take and you put that, uh, see, I got lucky, did it on the first crack. So we got the, the hook, that went right through the hook eye. Go over the top of your hook, poke the point through that loop. This is where you gotta make sure you got your glasses on and you got good lighting. And then you're good to go. There we go. Pull it down, pull it tight. And you gotta you gotta complete it fly. Yeah. So really not too bad. There's a, a number of components all layered on top of each other in a row. Um, but once you get it get it wet and you see it the water flowing over it, it, it looks alive. So so now we'll give it a try. What do you say?